veterans groups and activists have long been pushing lawmakers to approve the PACT Act. It's a bill that would expand health care access to military veterans exposed to toxic burn pits in war zones like Iraq and Afghanistan. But the bill is now stalled in the Senate. The measure passed the Senate earlier this year, but clerical issues have brought it back for another vote. And what was supposed to be an easy passage of a bipartisan measure has turned into a political football over issues of spending. Senator Pat Toomey was among the Republicans who voted against advancing the bill last week. Republican votes didn't change on the substance of the bill. Republicans have said, we want an amendment to change a provision that has nothing to do with veterans' health care. The Republicans support this. The Democrats added a provision that has nothing to do with veterans' health care, and that it's well, designed to change government accounting rules so that they can have a $400 billion spending spree. Leading the effort to get this bill across the finish line is Democratic Senator from Montana, John Tester. He chairs the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, and he joins me now. Senator Tester, welcome back to the news hour. So tell us what's going on here. Why has it been so hard to get this bill through? It's already unusual to see this kind of fight over def a defense uh, spending measure. Yeah, Judy, I, I just want to say one thing to correct the record. There is not uh, one thing that's changed in this bill, with the exception of one line that was taken out of this bill that uh, re allowed the VA to buy out provider contracts. That line was taken out because it was a revenue raiser, and there is nothing else that was changed in this bill since we voted on it on June 16th, and it passed with 84 votes. So I, I want to be clear with that, and I will sit down with anybody that wants to go through this bill line by line and prove that. This is an issue that was brought up by Senator Toomey, who is a friend of mine and, and somebody who's very, very smart, that says, hey, I'm going to be leaving this place and I want to control the appropriations process. So regardless what uh, justification we're going to use, and by the way, the Secretary of the VA said, if we pass Toomey's amendment, it's going to be rationing of care to our veterans. That is the truth. And so we need to be able to meet the needs of our veterans. This bill, it was, it was passed on June 16th, is the same bill. And we need to get the folks to come to the table and vote for it again because Health care that is delayed is health care that is denied, and we're denying health care on burn pits to our veterans all across this country, and it's why they're out here on the Capitol steps saying enough is enough, the United States Senate, step up, pass this bill, get it to the president's desk. So, Senator, what do you say to the Republicans? And we've heard it from Senator Toomey. You know this. And, by the way, we asked him to uh, join us on the program tonight. His office said he was not able to do that. But they say this is all about how this is funded, that there's language in here about mandatory versus discretionary. This is what they've told my colleague Lisa Desjardins. How do you respond to that? Well, there is. There's mandatory funding to take care of our veterans. That means that it's mandatory funding to take care of our veterans. We, Congress can't come in and say, you know what, we're not going to fund this program anymore, or we don't have to do it year after year after year. So in that vein, they're correct. But for the people who put their lives on the line and serve this country in the military, isn't that a good thing? Shouldn't they have the certainty to know that their health care is going to be there next year? In the case of burn pits, when we've been at war for 20 years and these folks are suffering cancers and lung diseases because of this, shouldn't Congress step up and take care of their end of the deal? I think they should. We did on June 16th, but unfortunately now that's been forgotten. And I think that's a huge mistake, especially for our all-volunteer military and folks who are looking to sign up, looking at this going, wow. They're not living up the end of the deal. Why would I want to join? Well, they say what they're worried about is that is that items like computers, uh, IT, uh, people who aren't really connected to burn pits are going to end up uh, falling under this uh, uh, these items going forward. They cite the uh, Committee for Responsible Federal Budget, saying this is not uh, truly this is not money that's that should be mandatory. Judy, you've been around this place a lot longer than I have, and I will tell you that Congress makes a decision on how money is spent. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. This amendment by Senator Toomey will take away that ability. And by the way, we'll cap this program and terminate this program after 10 years. We all know that toxic exposures in health care doesn't end after 10 years. Just take a look at Agent Orange and the Vietnam War. Those folks are still dealing with that. This bill actually deals with those folks, too, and radiation and others. So I, I, I think that the arguments ring hollow. 
uh, as far as I'm concerned. And look, we have to have some IT to take care of electronic health records and make sure that we get that done right. But that's a whole different pot of money. And the VA secretary just can't transfer that money because he wants to. There has to be congressional oversight, and there is. So, Senator, quick two questions on this. Will there be a vote on it? And do you think the Republicans will be allowed to put their amendments out and that it'll pass despite that? And, and how are these veterans affected if this is delayed? Uh, if, if, if it's delayed, uh, more veterans will continue to not have their health care addressed and, and die. And families that depend upon uh, that veteran for this source of income won't be there anymore. So it puts families at risk, too. I think there is an offer on the table right now um, to have uh, a series of, of, of votes to get this bill passed. And hopefully uh, the folks on the other side of the aisle, the Republicans, will accept that deal so we can get this bill passed tomorrow. Uh, I think we've waited far, far too long, Judy. Two other quick issues I want to ask you about, Senator. The status of the so-called Inflation Reduction Act that would address climate change, health care and other things. Do you believe that's going to pass the Senate? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm so focused on the PACT Act, I haven't really had a chance to review that. I've seen some things in it I like, like debt reduction and allowing Medicare to negotiate for prescription drugs. Um, and, and But I've got to look at the whole thing before I decide. But I, I think that uh, it's got a fair chance of passing, but I can't say it's an absolute. And final question, Senator, you voted for a measure that would codify abortion rights across the nation, nationally. It did not pass, though, because of the filibuster rule. Would you be willing to support a filibuster or change in the filibuster rule in order to see that go? We, we have been here before, and I can tell you that the problem with the change in the filibuster rule, and I think the proposal that uh, we negotiated that I was a part of back in January really protected minority rights, but that proposal is not on the table now. If it was brought up again, uh, I would support that. And basically what that says is, you debate and debate and debate and follow the two-speech rule, and then you vote with a simple majority. And I think that allows a minority to be able to control the floor for a long period of time and uh, gives them real power. Um, but, but look, if, if we don't have something that's going to stand the test of time when it comes to any of these important issues, they'll flop back and forth, and that's not healthy either. So on, the, on changing the filibuster, I hear you're not moving on that one. Well, look, if, if, if it's a change of filibuster like uh, I helped negotiate last January, I think that's a positive change that helps protect minority rights. And I think that's how it used to work in the old Mr. Smith goes to Washington days. <laughs> well, I don't quite remember those days, but I have been around a long time, Senator. Thank you very much. Senator John Tester of Montana, we appreciate it. Thank you.